Hey, what's up guys? It's time to do a parts haul video. This is for my 2016 Audi A3. I have the two liter with the Quattro all-wheel drive. Great car, I'm now at 93,000 miles roughly, and so some of the items that I purchased are basically gonna be to repair certain things that I've had issues with. And then because I'm in the Facebook group and I see everyone else's drama with their cars, I've learned what some of the common issues are with these type of vehicles. So this will most likely apply to, I believe, the GLI, the Volkswagen GLI, the GTI, um, some parts, even the Audi S3. And then of course, you guys can just do your homework and correct me if I'm wrong and stuff like that. So feel free to leave comments and things that you think I should also consider that maybe I have not done here. And then it'll also help people that are searching for the same car um, because there's a lot of people buying the 8V generation of the Audi A3, S3, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna dive in. This is not in any particular order, but hopefully this helps you just to understand. And then for context, this is not a car that I'm tracking, doing any autocross. This is basically gonna be my beater car, essentially, that I'm gonna keep for hopefully at least another five to 10 years. Um, I have another vehicle that is a super fun Audi that I probably will want to do other upgrades for in the future. Or as some of you probably already know, I really, really love the RS3 and would love to own that one day. So I'm not trying to dump a, pun a bunch of money into this car. And so that's why some of the parts may reflect maybe certain decisions I made with when purchasing certain things. So diving in first, um, my car is due for spark plug replacements. I should have done this a while ago, but I'm getting it done now. So I just decided to go with the NGK spark plugs. I don't need anything crazy. Like I said, I'm not tracking the car or anything like that. I just need something solid that'll keep the car running pretty healthy. So that's gonna get done. I have not shared what I've already done. Basically, one of the issues that I had was misfires. I went ahead and changed the ignition coil packs. The car has been super happy ever since I did that. I was having issues with cylinder one and four misfiring, which basically was causing the car to stall at certain points and like I couldn't get it to start. All these other things, I've done that and I've been driving the car, I think another 600 miles or so since I did that replacement and she's been super happy. But I know there's common issues with these, so that's why I'm addressing them. This here is another thing that I'm getting done because I am actually getting the timing cover replaced. So because of that, there's two camshaft magnets that go on the side there. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace those when I replace the timing cover. So. That's another item. Um, this here is actually, I bought this from Audi themselves. I went to their parts department. You have to do research to see what you can get for a good deal. FCP Euro is where I got 90% of the stuff from. This here, I got it from the dealership. So this here is the timing cover. Mine is leaking. So basically that's making it leak oil underneath the car. Um, thankfully it's just the upper so far from what I could tell. So this is the part here. So basically the camshafts that I purchased are the two that are gonna go right there. So excited to get that done, the car won't leak. Um, this was lit, oh, I can't remember the price actually, but the price wasn't too bad. Most of the things that go wrong with these cars, they don't cost a bunch of money, especially if you um, know how to do your own maintenance or um, you, know, you have a close friend that works at a shop or something like that. But if you go to the dealership, yeah, you're gonna pay I think it's at least $250 per hour um, for labor. So try to avoid the dealership at all costs if it's not something that's covered. So obviously since I'm doing the timing cover, um, getting that replaced, I'm gonna have to do an oil change as well. Um, this is mainly because I'm also getting the oil pan replaced, which is gonna be um, underneath this here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil pan replaced because that's leaking and then the oil sensor as well because that has a little gasket seal piece as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that replaced. Obviously I'm gonna do an oil change and I'm due for one anyway. Okay, and then this here is just a engine air filter. Um, this brand's pretty solid, I like it. Again, I'm not tracking the car. I don't need a bunch of airflow and things like that. And then for the oil change, obviously got the man filter to go with it. Um, you can go with another oil. I do like Liquid Mali. Their products are really good. I have a friend with a Euro shop and this is what they use and he really, really likes it. Um, but obviously do your research and it depends on what you're using the car for. And then this is just the second um, camshaft magnet too. 
So this here, there's a bunch of stuff for the timing cover, but let me at least show you um, what I got. I'm sorry, not timing cover, <laughs> for the oil pan. So excited to get that replaced. Um, these parts, I mean, they're not the best quality anyway, so I, this wasn't too expensive when I bought it, but got it from FCP Euro. And then it comes with everything already, um, you know, included with the gasket already inserted into the plastic and stuff. But yeah, it's nothing crazy, just plastic. And so you just have to be prepared for some of these parts. And especially now that my car is, you know, eight years old at this point, it's time to get it done. So excited for that one. I've had an oil leak for a really long time and that's not good. This is only gonna get worse. If you ignore this for a long time, then that can put you in a position where you have a much bigger oil leak and then you have to get towed somewhere because you don't wanna risk blowing the engine. So there's a few parts that go with it. Obviously it came with the screws and things like that. And then this here is the oil level sensor. I'll try my best to include some of these parts and links to them. Um, in the description of the video. I'm making this both for Facebook and YouTube, so just depends on which platform you're on. This here is the oil level sensor that tells you, hey, your oil's too low, you need to top it off or whatever the case is. And then there's a little uh, seal here too, so this part can wear out over time. All right, so that's that box minus a couple small screws and things that I'm not gonna go over. All right, so this box has a lot of the preventative maintenance things that I wanna get done where there's typical issues with these cars. And so that's what this box mainly is inside of here. This here is the crankcase vent. This is a part that typically causes a lot of issues with, I believe even getting smoke coming out of the exhaust. Um, and then this here, well, it's fully closed, I'll, I'll keep it closed. But basically this here goes like on top of the motor. I know this causes a lot of problems down the road, so I'm like, I'm fixing a bunch of other stuff, I might as well fix this too. So this here is the crankcase vent. Do your research, see what applies to your vehicle. I'm excited to get this one because I haven't had issues, but it can cause some of the similar problems of like car stalling and all kinds of other stuff. All right, another very common issue with, I mean, any car these parts go out, but in a German car, they go out a, a lot sooner. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the water pump and thermostat. It's all in one unit here. So this I'm excited about because I won't have any issues uh, down the road. I haven't had some of the hiccups that this causes yet. I'm excited to get this because pretty much everyone, I actually had to replace this on my Audi SQ5, the water pump. Um, at 40, or I'm sorry, like 50,000 miles. So on my A3, I bought it at 44,000 miles. I'm now at 93,000 miles and haven't replaced this. It's time because it's just only a matter of moments before this probably goes out. So this one is a very <laughs> exciting preventative maintenance item here. And then um, I have had my DSG transmission service uh, done. I actually did that when I first bought the car. I wanted to make sure that the transmission fluid was changed. And so that's what this fluid is here. I decided to go with Liquid Molly again. So this is the dual clutch gear oil, um, the 8100. So I'm excited to get that done, keep the transmission happy. When I did some research, and I'm sure most people that really take great care of their cars know that a uh, lifetime fluid really doesn't mean like keep that fluid in there for 15 years. I did research and found that that usually refers to the lifetime of the warranty. So that's in most cases 36,000 miles. So just to keep the transmissions happy, which is a very expensive repair for, I don't know how much this gear fluid costs, but very cheap compared to a transmission. So it's always good to get this done when you're driving, you know, conditions and all that great stuff. So excited for that one. Um, because I'm getting the water pump and thermostat replaced, then obviously I need some coolant. This here is the Valvoline G40. Um, they've changed the types of coolants where I think it was G12 at one moment, G13. As long as it's the Euro stuff, I'm comfortable with it. Should be good to go. And um, another thing, I've never done the brake fluid flush on this car, and so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. 
a lot of times if you don't take it watered down, something along those lines, but pay for an expensive brake system uh, repair. So I'm gonna get this done, keep the car happy. On that note, speaking of fluids, this here is gonna be for the rear, dif I'm sorry, the front differential, which I didn't even know this car had a front differential. I probably sound dumb because it's all wheel drive, but I just didn't know because I'm just used to front wheel drive cars kind of having those in sporty um, configurations and stuff like that. Anyway, going to do the front uh, gear oil, get that changed. And then when I do the um, Haldex fluid, which is going to be for the all wheel drive system, I'm going to go ahead and do the filter for that and then uh, change the fluid for the Haldex system. So that'll be great. Keep the car happy. Keep the all-wheel drive, you know, nice and strong and all that good stuff. And so, yeah, very excited for that. So those are um, all the things. Um, there's a couple of parts, obviously, that came with it. Small little, uh, you know, screws. Um, looks like there's a another filter in here or gasket, something like that. So, yeah, long story short, excited to get all the fluids changed, get the water pump replaced stop the leaks that I have and all that good stuff. And then I have to switch over to suspension. So that's going to be next. The rear um, shocks are leaking. And so I need to get those uh, done. Um, what else is next on that car? Um, I've done a lot of this stuff, but yes, yeah, mainly going to be suspension. It's very, very loose now in comparison to what it was like before. And so I'm excited to get that done. So again, leave comments. If you have recommendations, correct me if I made some, you know, technical errors on how I described some things. You guys are all car gurus and stuff too. And I'm learning a lot of this. I'm in a lot of the 8V, 8Y, um, A3, S3 Facebook groups man have i learned a ton about this car from there so if there's any car you're thinking about getting especially if you're you know thinking about getting something german man get in those facebook groups start seeing what issues people are having and that way you're not surprised when stuff comes up on the car so hope this helps catch you in another video peace